Anti-Semitism, a hatred that lurks in the shadows, often hidden from view. But the reasons why it remains hidden are complex. It can be subtle, masked by coded language and innuendo, or it can be overt, like the violence that erupted in Nazi Germany. It often remains hidden for reasons that are complicated, a mixture of fear, ignorance, and power. And sometimes, the effects of this hidden hatred can be felt on a local level, as was the case with a string of fires that crossed our region in 1987. In this documentary, we will explore the insidious international, national, and local connections to anti-Semitism, the reasons why it remains hidden, and the devastating impact that it can have. I'm from Germany, and in the 8th and 9th grade, I had to learn about World War II, National Socialism, and anti-Semitism. We do this so it doesn't happen again. These lessons are an important part of German education, with mandatory learning about the atrocities of this war. I learned about the rise of a dictator, and how people were defined by races and punished accordingly. When I was 13, I visited the second largest concentration camp, Dachau. It hit me hard when I was walking through the camp, seeing the conditions that prisoners suffered. I remember standing in a room as big as an average sized dorm room at Salisbury School, with built-in beds for 40 to 50 people. I also saw books filled with the names of the dead. I walked through a huge yard where prisoners were sentenced to die. They had to stand there all day from morning to night. And whoever moved, whether it was their fault or not, they were immediately shot. I witnessed the first gas chamber for the extermination of Jews. Walking by all these mass graves stole my faith in humanity. A part of German education includes visits to memorials and studying projects like the Stolpersteine. Stolpersteine, or stumbling stones, are small plaques of memory which are intended to honor the dead. They are placed in the walkways where Jews lived, worked, and worshipped. This approach is healthy and should be done by every country. Humans can be cruel and it is important to learn about the terrible things that people have done, regardless of their beliefs or appearance. We must honor the dead and remember the millions lives lost. We should learn about the good and terrible of every country, including the Spanish, Portuguese, and Americans. This history makes me feel ashamed. Even though I know it's not my fault, I'm ashamed that humans could be so cruel. Regardless of what we believe or what we look like, we are all the same. Human is human. We do not talk about it much, but it was here. An organization called the United Christian Front in Brooklyn was a group of radical anti-Semitic supporters of Father Charles Coughlin, who inspired a Nazi rally in Madison Square Garden in 1939 and featured a sitting member of Congress. This group was later investigated on charges of seditious conspiracy and stealing federal munitions and property. Even a sitting senator was involved. While being investigated for his complicity in a plot with Third Reich intelligence, a sitting senator, Ernest Lundin, was killed in a mysterious plane crash in 1940. The conspiracy was extensive. A federal grand jury indicted 28 people on various charges for conspiring with a Nazi propaganda effort. The investigation uncovered a plot spearheaded by a Nazi propagandist, George Sylvester Vera, who created a Nazi propaganda machine and coordinated it from inside Congress to spread the Reich's message through radical groups like the United Christian Front and congressmen like New York's Hamilton Fish. Rachel Maddow's podcast, Ultra, highlights the activities of Nazis in the U.S. during the 1930s and 1940s. Additionally, some U.S. corporations and other prominent Americans financially supported Hitler's rise to power in Germany 
and admiration of Nazi ideology. Even the bucolic Berkshires are not immune. In nearby Sharon, Connecticut, an inn stood near the clock tower at the center of town. One of their pamphlets states that they have beautiful views and rooms with a big library while also declaring no Hebrews wanted. These incidents of discrimination set the stage for a more violent outbreak of anti-Semitism in the Berkshires. Over the course of one week in 1987, two Jewish-owned businesses in our community fell victim to a string of arson attacks. Saperstein's in Millerton, New York, and Bob's Clothing in Canaan, Connecticut were both targeted and destroyed, leaving the community in shock and disbelief. These fires were set during the week of Hitler's birthday and were not isolated incidents, rather they were part of a string of similar attacks. We were able to document five local Jewish homes or businesses that burned down in the year 1987. Why is this not better known? To learn more, we spoke with local writer Carol Asher. Person has had had a house burned down at that period. And, and I think the idea was that, that Jews were accepted in the northwest corner uh, insofar as they remained not, as they, insofar as they didn't make a big deal out of being Jews. And so anything could be a big deal. Anything could be a big deal. According to Connecticut Humanities, the KKK started to embed itself in local communities, labeling themselves the Invisible Empire. During the same period that fires ravaged our community, the Grand Wizard resided in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Anti-Semitism. It is currently on the rise in the United States with a 34% year-over-year increase in anti-Semitic attacks and incidents, totaling over 2,700 in 2021 alone. Jewish people make up 2.4% of the American population, but are the target of 55% of religious hate crimes. As we've also seen with the Tree of Life massacre, Jews are still being killed today for the simple act of being Jewish. This all remains a stark reminder of the dangers of hate and bigotry and highlights the importance of understanding and confronting the history of hate and discrimination against Jewish people. The Jewish community in Salisbury's surrounding area has strong roots in the land that it has cultivated over the past century. The farming that they were able to do on the land was limited, and after some time, Jews began to lead their own businesses like bed and breakfast inns and later on, retail stores. The congregation Beth David was founded in Amenia, New York in 1929 and has remained the heart of the area's Jewish life. We were fortunate enough to meet one of the members, Carol Asher, who wrote A Chance for Land and Fresh Air, as well as cultivated an exhibition on the Russian immigrants that formed the beginnings of this community. The works of the exhibition now hang in the community room of the synagogue today. We were also lucky enough to be welcomed into the synagogue by Rabbi John. He took us through the history of the synagogue as well as giving us some words of wisdom. After a school year of further inspection upon the Jewish community surrounding Salisbury, we presented our documentary at the Troutbeck Symposium. This was an integral part of our project. The reason that our class presents our work at the Troutbeck Symposium every year is because of its historical significance. The 1916 and 1933 Amenia Conferences were held at the Troutbeck. The Amenia Conferences were designed for prominent African-American activists and leaders such as W.E.B. Du Bois to come together to advance the civil rights of oppressed Americans. The owner of the Troutbeck during this period was Joel E. Spingar who was a professor at Columbia, served on the Military Intelligence Board, and was one of the founders of the NAACP. We bring all this under the light to illustrate the many factors that define our local Jewish community, and we are in hopes that the world will understand our once hidden past and live towards a future that resonates with all of us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and grant you John 
and Carol and Matthew and Billy and Michael and Rowan, God's greatest gift, the gift of shalom, peace. God bless you all. Get out there and make the world a better place. Amen. 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 <laughs>